hides only one room. Even that scenario, the menstruating girl cannot go, so she was confined in a single corner. Even in the disaster case like earthquake or flood, if the family was living under the tarpaulin, even that case they were isolating during the menstruation. <coughs> While they were in a monthly exile, they cannot eat the food, they cannot touch, they cannot be <coughs> mobile as their wish. We'll explain later more. During menstruation, they cannot participate any social cultural gatherings, for example, wedding ceremony, birthday ceremony. She cannot join any kind of political meetings, even the meetings of the mother's group in a village. They, was, they cannot touch their family members, especially the main members, priests, seniors of the family, pregnant women, because they consider it pure and dirty. You may not believe with me. You may agree. During menstruation, they cannot eat many things like dairy product, meat product, vegetables, the pickles, the citrus fruits. You may ask if so, what they would eat. They eat very degraded forms of food like roasted corn, handmade bread. While saying bread, don't consider the bread like yeah. Is something different. <coughs> anyway, this, they are not eating the regular food, what their other families members are eating or what they um, are eating beyond the menstrual period. So they have to eat something different. There is some exception in some communities, but in general, they are not allowed to eat these kinds of foods. But some restriction, like Restriction in terms of the food or thoughts, it is not visible all the time. In some places, the some forms of restriction, it is easily visible. But some forms of restriction, it is invisible. You have to spend few hours to few days or month to understand the forms of restriction. may ask who are following the restriction. Many people assume that <coughs> the poor people, the villagers who are living in the rural areas, who never ever go to the schools, these people are following the restriction. That was the assumption. But it was absolutely myth. The educated people, the NGO workers, activists, health workers, the teachers, those who are supposed to teach or who are providing the trainings on not following these restrictions, they are also practicing the some form of restriction in the private life. Few with me group who are not practicing the restriction traditionally or they are practicing some form of restriction in the private life, they are practicing a more or less same form of restriction in the public life because they get the pressure from the college, the society. And in many cases, there is no infrastructure for not following the uh, practices like there is no separate toilet for the girls, no disposable um, systems. So they, they, they got the pressure and they have to follow the restriction. I'm sure you all know about the Word of Chaupadi. We also just watched the video on it because it is globally disseminated by the international media like BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera. They made so many news and the videos and talking about the Chaupadi. But today I wanted to change the conversation. Let's hear the testimony from my colleague. <coughs> What is this feel about it? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm from the U.S., so I'm Nepali, though. I was born in Nepal. I moved to the U.S. when I was about eight years old, and I wanted to talk about the menstrual restrictions that I faced living in the U.S. 
like she said, everybody's heard about you know women being banished in cow shit and dying. Um, and from New York Times and BBC, it's gotten international um, coverage recently. But the thing is that this is so much more complicated than just that. Um, my parents are fairly educated. Um, I grew up in the US. I moved there when I was eight years old. I got my first period when I was 10. Um, it was very early, which you guys didn't even think that it was very early. It was only a few girls sent to get around that time. So at that time, I did not know anything about periods, not from my parents, not from my school. We weren't really taught that in, in grade four. Um, so it was summertime, I got my period, I told my mom, mom, something's happening, I don't know what's happening, uh, I, I'm bleeding, I, did I cut myself? I don't know. And she said, congratulations, you're now a woman. Um, we'll have a party for you later, but for now you can't stay in the house. I had a little brother and a, and a dad, so um, like she said, according to tradition, we're not allowed to touch our male members um, when we're on our period. So she said, you're going to your cousin's house for the next five days. Um, now, they live in a million dollar house with a pool and everything, so not equivalent to a cow shed, but banishment and um, isolation is also psychological, right? So I was sent there for five days. Um, I was isolated into one room. Um, I was in a lot of pain. I didn't get medication. I didn't get to talk to my mom or my brother. My brother was five years old. And that was the first time I realized that there was a major difference between me and my little brother. Not because I was five years older and so much smarter, um, but because I was born a girl and he was born a boy. Um, so every month after that, my brother and I were, um, we drifted further and further apart. We realized our roles in society. Um, I realized that the, for these five days, um, I was dehumanized. And even though my cousin had a pool at the time, I couldn't swim in it. Um, <coughs> So ultimately, regardless of where we're at being isolated, uh, can you imagine you're in a classroom like this and all the ladies in here, can you imagine you have a separate corner over there because you're on your period? How humiliating it can be that everybody knows you're on your period and everybody knows that because you're bleeding, you're something else, you're an animal that needs to be cast aside. So although the cow sheds are different from what we experience in Nepal or in the UK. All of it basically um, comes from the fact that there is a lack of respect for women and their bodies. And so we need to change the conversation from, from cow sheds to menstrual restriction. Because we all sort of do this thing where if we're on our periods and we have to go to the bathroom, we shove our tampon in our sleeves, right, so that nobody will see. So we kind of need to change this, talk to our partners about our periods, talk to our teachers, whoever it may be, because it's not just our issue, it's everybody's issue. There are so many men in here listening to this talk and I'm so happy to see everybody. Um, so she'll talk a little bit more about changing the conversation, but I just wanted to share a little bit about my experience in the US. Thank you.